Sorry for the late upload, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to part 25 of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we were told to get the storeroom key in the phone booth, and that's exactly what we're doing. And now, we're going to be told to go to the storage room. As you can see here, I must be psychic, but anyway. Or more like, it must be like I played this game before. Let's go on ahead and go over to the storeroom. I mean, that's a lot of backtracking we're going to be doing, but this is sort of a necessary thing. This is a small area, ladies and gentlemen. Compared to the next chapter, this is a pretty small area. And compared to chapter 2, it's a definite small area. There's only a few spaces we could actually go, and it opens the way for us as we go along. Meanwhile, speaking of opening the way for us, Jolene's chewing on a guard because she's here because the guard hears sounds and have no idea how those sounds got through a padlock. Well, this guy may have his job on the line, but one thing is clear: Jolene's acting a little suspicious. As a matter of fact, she acts rather hostile to Mario. Yeah, that sort of raises a few red flags, to, so, to say the least. Now then, after we raise the red flags with her, let's go in and see what's going on in the storage key. In the storage room. I just said storage key. Sorry about that. And... Oh, allow me to renege my statement. This is that I made like several parts ago. This is the last time we'll see Ms. Mouse. For real, because we won't see her again until like the end of chapter four. She doesn't come out to uh, steal anything or whatnot in chapter four. So if that's in case you're wondering, then uh, this is literally the last time we'll see her. Anyway. She does warn us about something, though. And that is, there's actually something, or should I say someone, that's up there. Which is making most of the noises. Of course, what Miss Mouse intro wouldn't be complete without a kiss! Hanorn is jealous. That's okay. Soon, Miss Mouse will be... You know appearing yet again. You'll probably have to wait a couple of parts for that, though. And, of course, a grudgingly long chapter as well. So, now, the next thing we're gonna have to do is answer another one of Mr. X's orders. Which he tells us to find the stairs. Or the staircase switch. Which... Honestly, you can't really find unless you have Flurry. Well, it's kind of mandatory to carry Flurry around. Behind all those boxes is a switch, but behind here is just as important as well. Okay, blow it away. And we got ourselves charge up uh, par charge partner badge. That's what I meant to say. I can't believe I stumbled there. But the Charge Partner Bass is basically what's with me. The same thing with Mario, except it's for the partner. So, yeah. Both Mario and the partner can charge now. Well, not both Mario and the partner. Rather, Mario can charge, as can the partner. If he equips the badge. Or she equips the badge. Or Mario equips the badge. That's what I meant to say, Mario. Alright, now then, let's use Orin to get across here, and let's use the hammer. And now lead us to, not only a treasure, no, not treasure, I meant badge. Well, it's technically treasure. We're gonna use Coops for this one. And that is an HP Plus partner. Come on. Yeah, but that takes the same amount of batch points as an HP+. Plus. So when I get more batch points, I'll add it to there. Eventually. 
But for the time being, let's go and investigate the rafters? Oh, by the way, that's is actually for the flightless stairs. And of course, Mr. Grubba is making sure that there's nothing in the storage room. Yes, absolutely nothing in the storage room. It's not at all suspicious. Yeah, Grubba is really paranoid to say the least. If anything, I would say that Grubba's actions is definitely in the line of Vince McMahon's. He's doing some suspicious activity, Vince will try to cover it up, plain and simple. I'm not trying to down anybody in the WWE, it's just exactly what Vince does. I mean, he's done storylines when he's done suspicious activity and he tried to cover it up. Where do you think the It's Me Austin meme come from? Now then. Uh, Grubba is still pointing out some other important things. Like for instance, King K didn't really retire, to say the least. He's gone. Literally gone. And with that, his uh, entry in the roster has been deleted for the time being. Until he actually appears. Meanwhile, Grubba's snooping into Joeline's business, which, of course, Joeline take offense to. It's bad enough she had Bandy Andy doing that stuff. She doesn't need Grub doing it too. So I kind of can understand how she feels. But she does too many shady things too. Now then. With everything that's happening. You honestly don't know what's going on. But, there is one thing that will, uh, happen. He'll get a little suspicious when he finds out you are talking in the ceiling. So there's one of three things you could do. Meow, squeak, or belch. I normally choose squeak because that will mean that there's a rat in the cellar. Uh, belch? I'm not sure what that'll do. And meow? He'll think that a cat got in this time. No, I think Belch will Belt, be extra suspicious. That's what it is. But with that said, that's all the business we're going to be doing for right now. Let's get back to fighting. Oh, and mind you, in the last part, there was a cake given to Mario. Right? after his uh, rank 4 match. If you ate that cake, that is good. You'll be able to uh, heal up all of your, a your HP, your, your flower points, and your star points. Now, after this fight, however, you might want to be really extra careful. Oh, and by the way, I just cut because I had to go get some items for the next fight. Because the next fight is Chomp Country, which is Chomps. Chain Chomps. Now, the only reason why this part is actually long is because of the prerequisites that Grubba gives us. One of which is where you'll see by the end of this video, uh, Grubba asks if we could just... No, it asks if my partner would just sit out while I do all the fighting. Sometimes the uh, stipulations change. But for right now, 
we're going to be appealing and our opponents are Chain Chomps. Yep. Not a good look. Alrighty then. Let's go on ahead and deal with these Chain Chomps. They're just like uh, the Armored Harriers, with only one notable exception. At least you can use the Super Hammer against them, or the Quake Hammer for that matter. But all you need to do is just appeal three times. Well, that's kind of easy enough. Well, uh, not kind of easy. It, no, no, I'm right. It is kind of easy. Because there's still the matter of these things. And they take like five damage upon hit. So if you dock, I mean, if you block, you'll still take about maybe three damage. Oh, wait. Somebody's throwing something? Oh, a bone. You bastard. All right. Oh, damn it, I missed it. Oh, but I got one of them at least. Screw it, quick hammer it is. Suffer my wrath. Now let's use the gold. And we're done. That's a lot of experience points, by the way. We've gone to rank 3 now. Thankfully, we don't have to fight anyone else that's a boss for the time being. You know, like we did in the last part. Since we received 16 coins and my rank rose, I'm going to save some of that money in order for me to make an investment, at least by the end of this part. And what's this? This is your last warning. Stop snooping around about the Crystal Star. If you don't, you'll suffer the same fate as the others who've gone missing. This right here would confuse a lot of people because they think that's X giving you that threat. When in fact, it's not X at all. Oh no. We'll come to that point when we do, but for the time being, I'm going to say because I took a lot of damage from those, uh, two chops. Now then, let's go ahead and grab the next battle. So let's see who we're going to be fighting next. It's going to be... Hamma, Bama, and Flare. And I cannot attack for the first three turns. Uh-oh. Not good. Not good at all. And if this fight drags out, well, now you know why. Oh. And we're coming to the second-rate contender. Meaning we'll get another cake. Here's the thing, you don't want to eat this cake. If you eat this cake, well, your partner will get sick, leaving you to defend yourself. Which, to be perfectly honest with you, for this prerequisite is not that bad, because three turns would pass faster with one enemy, I mean, with one character, but at the same time, it'll leave you in a desperate situation because you don't have your partner's abilities to back you up. So, yeah. Let's deal with Hamma, Bam, and Flare. Which, we have a Hammer Brother, Fire Brother, and a Boomerang Brother. The trifecta of evil from Super Mario Brothers 3. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, then, let's do this. So I can't attack the first three turns. So, what I'm going to do is defend. 
Yes, defend! Ah, oh, damn it! And... Orange dropped a three. And I'm gonna do something incredibly stupid. Well, that's not incredibly stupid. Exit is pretty smart. No, that incredibly stupid part hasn't come yet. Let us defend. Oh, I didn't block it. I didn't block that either. Okay, that is bull. Alright. As you can see, all three brothers are... How should I put it? Level... S well, they got 7 HP. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Also, this would be a good time to use Sweet Treat. Because after all, I have one more turn of not attacking, and then I'm going to curb stop these guys like there's no tomorrow. And I will, too. Alright. Let's see. I'll charge up the Yoshi and get ready to... Well, or anyway. And get ready to, uh... Deal with the Boomerang Brothers. Yeah, why not Earthquake? Or should I use Power... I mean, Hammerquake. I mean, it may use up a couple of HP, but... Aw, oh, damn it! Stupid audience, stop hitting me! And... I got it! Sorry that took so long. I had to literally wait for three turns for them to... You have to literally wait for two turns to pass by. That's what I was trying to do. Well, the Yoshi's exhausted, but that's okay! Aaron is going to be fine because I'm going to get some rest. However, there's one guy that's definitely not fine, and that's the guy who ate the cake. Well, now that he's poisoned, well, it's safe to say that... Well, he should never have eaten something that didn't belong to him. Or, at the most part... The cake is a lie. That's the one thing he needs to know. So, let's go on ahead and, uh... Well, let's check on this guy first. Whatever kind of poison whoever used that... Whoever put in the... Oh, whoever brought that cake, what kind of... Whatever kind of poison they're using, it's pretty darn effective. And it would have actually poisoned your party members till the end of that fight. So, yeah. That just leaves us with one more match. And the final match before the champion is the Koopinator. Now, here's the thing with the Koopinator. Uh, this battle may be longer than usual as well. Because my partner can't attack at any time. Not even as so much as use Tattle. That should let you know that uh, the stipulation is not in your favor. You've only got a one-on-one -on -one fight with uh, the Koopinator. If you happen to eat the cake. Now then, oh wait, no, you have a one-on-one -on -one fight with the Koopinator whether or not you eat the cake anyway, so it's best that I would have eaten the cake. However, um, it's technically Orin's going to be sitting in the back row while I'm doing all the dirty work, which is why it's going to take so long. Sorry for that lost train of thought there, but yeah, I'm going to have to plan out my strategy pretty well. First, let's Quake Hammer. 
I am so tempted to just smack him in the head with a hammer while he's down. Unfortunately, all I can do is strike him down with a hammer. Ooh, charging! Definitely works. Kinda wish I could charge uh, the rest of myself. Or charge the rest of my allies. Yeah, you need to stay down. See, if I had Orin in my available party that did not get restricted by uh, the fact that I didn't have a partner in battle that attacked. Ah, excuse me. I have to scratch my ear. But yeah, if it wasn't for that stipulation, uh... I would have been mopped the floor with this guy. After I used the Quake Hammer, I would have had the Yoshi ground pound him, and then afterwards, I repeat the process all over again. However, that's not going to be the case. I've been electrified, that's good. But at the same time, uh, how should I put this? Ugh. Excuse me. At the same time, uh, the only thing that uh, Orin will be good for is healing. So in a way, he will help me. He just can't actually help you attack. So defense or uh, trash talk is basically all... Not the trash talk, I meant appealing, sorry. I'm trying to get my uh, terminology mixed up here. But defense and appealing is basically all you can do at this point in time. Oh, and I'm foolish enough to use my life shroom. No! Well, that's right. It's okay. Ugh. Excuse me. It's alright that I had to kill that x naught because he had a rock. And Koopinator's down to 6 HP, actually. So, let's... Uh, spin jump him. Aww. Oh, damn it. It's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? Alright. Normal jump. I wish I wouldn't miss the commands, because if I would have missed the commands, it would have been over with by now. And now you're dead. Woo! With that, ladies and gentlemen, we are one step away from taking down the champ. But for the time being, we got some more favors to do for Mr. X. It's not always that simple. Well, n if it was too simple, then well, it would be probably the PlayStation 2 uh, Final Fantasy VI. But anyway, we've got ourselves another mail call. And this one is from Mr. X yet again. We gotta remove all the Great Gonzalez posters from the front lobby area. Well, that sounds good. But let me rest first. Ooh! Sorry about that, I had a dead space there. But let's go on ahead and deal with Mr. X's Aaron and switch to Flurry. Mind you, uh, the only reason why we're doing this is because we have a key to find. And that may actually blow the lid on a lot of things. But for now, let's actually find out what's behind these posters. Oh, sorry about that. I'm 
had yet another blank spot. My bad. I didn't mean to do that. I kind of ran out of things to say. Except we're blowing posters. And sometimes the posters have a, are finicky on where you want to blow them. And that did not sound right. Not at all. Okay, let's go on the other side of that poster. Maybe that'll work. And... Now let's get the first poster. That's up on the top. Now then, let's get this one here. And... Hold on. Okay, we'll just go on the other side then. Okay, we'll go a little bit further back. There we go. Storage key room. So now that we've got that, we can now actually go straight into the second floor. So let's get on back and let's save. Because we got ourselves a long way to go tomorrow. This is RP Man 985. Hold on, wait, before we do, let's see if, what this key is for anyway. Wait, wait, let, let's see what this is for. We'll just open this up here. Oh, it's just about to sign off, I'm sorry. I did more than what the usual share calls for, but that's okay. Now let's switch over to... Uh, Orin, and we're gonna fly over. Now then, let's twist and oh, put the box back over there. Put the box back over there. Jeez, this is horrible. Uh, we've got a dead Koopa and a half dead shy guy. No, it's not half dead shy guy, half dead bandit. Which are mistaken for shy guys. But he gives Mario an important clue about not going near the ring near if the No, not going near the ring at night when nobody's around. Now then Let's go on ahead and leave this place. All right, uh, there's nothing really to say about the storeroom except there two dead bodies in here, or sort of dead bodies. All right. Oh, sorry, Toss nodding off again. Oh boy. Oh man, sorry about that. I've had a long day and I shouldn't be nodding off with deep spaces. But anyway, we're gonna be cutting off here. Damn it! I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about nodding off in the middle of commentary. That was not my intention. I must have had a really rough day if I'm doing that. But anyway, next part, in part uh, 24, we're going to actually fight Rock Hawk. And that's what's going to happen. Also, we're going to find out exactly who really is responsible for King K and Bandy Andy.